so Susie, I can't believe it. It has been an epic couple of weeks getting this. Series five, episode one of Bike World Together. Can you believe we're on series five of the show? It's gone so quickly. Yeah, it really, really has. And more unbelievable even is the fact that you got me to do something that I thought I'd never do. I know, I've been determined for ages to get you to love off-road riding as much as I do. Whenever we've done it in the past, you always seem to moan about it. And cry like a little girl, yeah. Like a, You are definitely like a little girl. But when I heard about BMW off-road skills, I just thought it'd be perfect for you to go back to basics and then hopefully get bitten by the off-road bug. I must admit, it's something that I've never really wanted to do in the past or look forward to, but I think it was about time I faced my demons. But one question, did we have to go all the way to Wales for it? What's wrong with Wales? My granddad was from Wales. That explains quite a lot, but that's not all we've been up to, is it? After a bit of a mission, we arrived at our cosy hotel in the Brecon Beacons. Now, we say it was a bit of a mission, and it was, because normally it's about a three and a half hour journey from where we are to Wales, but it was turned into a six hour journey because Muggins here, halfway through, started to inform us that she'd left her suitcase at home. Whoops. So after a good night's rest at the hotel from the rather long journey, uh, it was time to head off to the off-road skills centre in the morning and get allocated our bikes. Yeah, now both Luke and I were allocated the GS 1200s and I was a little bit nervous about this prior and then when I got there and saw it I thought there's no way that I'm going to be able to be on that all day. Even I was intimidated by the size of the 1200 but I was told in no uncertain terms by one of the instructors to man up and get on with it. So then it was time for us to get on the bikes and head off for a 15 minute journey on road to the practice area. Yeah, I was really excited actually because when we got there I realised it was where I did dawn to dusk and I've always told you how difficult it was <laughs> and I wanted you to see how truly hard it was. I mean imagine and my surprise though because you've been going on about how tough it was and there's me doing my first bit of off-roading and you're like going, oh this is dawn till dusk. I was like, what <laughs> have I let myself in for? But I thought it'd be brilliant to have another go at those really tricky parts. When we got to the practice area we didn't even start the bikes for the first hour or so, did we? Yeah, which I thought was a bit odd at a kind of off-road skills school, but then I realised why, as you said, they were taking it back right to basics. And for me, the first thing I needed to learn properly was what, how to pick up a bike. Up. Easy as that. Looking at the GSs, you think if they fall over, little old me is never going to be able to pick them up, knowing the correct technique or not. I must admit, I thought even muscular old me would have problems, but then I saw Jenny, who was, what, five foot nothing and very petite. She managed to pick it up so easily, I realised, yeah, it's all in the hips, as they say. That is by far the most difficult part. <laughs> Thank you. And get yourself, get your knee in there like Jenny does. That's it. Go on, you got it. Good job. So up next, it was time to learn about the balance point of the bike. And this is the fact that even with the GSs being uber heavy, I mean, the 1200 weighs over 300 kilograms, if it's within a certain plane, you can actually hold the bike up and walk around it with just two fingers, unlike the windshield, the petrol tank filler, or from behind. Easy. Then finally, we got to start the bikes, but we still couldn't ride them. It was all about walking around the car park, using two fingers on the clutch and two fingers on the brake. I much prefer to ride them. <laughs> and then the fun stuff really started. They taught us how to stand up properly on the bike, which, no surprise, my technique was rubbish. And they even got us to go around the car park nice and slowly, learning about cornering. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the gate here, the two yellow cones, and then wind our way up there. So that means going around the outside of the blue cone there. Yeah, how did you find the slalom? Slalom I didn't mind so much actually. I found that quite easy and it was great because it taught you about turning your head where you want to go and your hips while you're standing on the bike, but then I found the squares bit a little bit trickier. Yeah, I've got a real habit of looking down. As soon as you look down, you lock the wheel and then you fall off. <laughs> yeah. Because once you've got that balance right, it makes it so much easier, do you know what I mean? Because you're not getting tired, you're not focusing on that. I felt a bit wobbly at some point. At this point, my confidence was sky high, and I actually think I was a little bit better at the slow manoeuvring stuff than Susie was. Yeah, whatever. Probably my favourite part of the car park exercise is when we learned how to do the skids, especially the back wheel skids. I wanted to do that all day. It was the most fun thing I've ever did and made me feel like a riding god. You literally hammer it up to the line, grab the clutch, and just slam on the back brake. And as long as you don't take your foot off the back brake until you come to a stop, you're okay. Then we had a front brake exercise. How did you find that? That was a little bit more daunting because looking at the front wheel is not something you really want to do on the road that much. But once you got used to it, literally just by pulling in the brake until you felt it lock and then letting go and getting on the gas, it became not as daunting, shall we say. All courses I've been on, they go back to basics and sometimes this can seem a little bit tedious, but here I'm really glad they did. We then got to put all that training into practice with a trail ride. <laughs> Uh, 
at this point, what amazed me is neither sort of crashed yet. So when we were last looking at our track bike project, we had the chief technician from Geelink Kawasaki, Ben Wilson's race team, David, to come down and we'll just give it a bit of a once over. But now it's time to get things a little bit more serious as we look at changing one of the biggest things you can change on a bike that will affect its performance on track, and that is the suspension. Now, the problem being with suspension is that it can get quite technical, and I'm a bit stupid. So luckily we brought in a man who knows a little bit more about it. This is Adam Griffin. Uh, and Adam is, a, I believe, a sports scientist, as referred to in the world of racing, and obviously our track coach, ex-California Superbike School instructor, and a man who knows quite a lot about suspension. Tell me about the basics. Come on, what, what, what does suspension do? Well, in its most basic form, uh, suspension, uh, we're, we're looking to, to give, it, uh, give us a nice ride, a comfortable yeah. ride. Well, and on a road bike, for instance, the suspension, as you say, is much more to do with comfort, isn't it? It's, it's a case of absorbing the bumps and not chucking you all over the shop. That's exactly it, you know, on any given road uh, we've got bumps and hollows that we want the, the, the tyre to follow. Mm. So the suspension uh, allows uh, the, the bike to do that, uh, gives us uh, comfort but ultimately also gives us good traction, good levels yeah. of traction, uh, keeping the tyre in contact with the tarmac as, as much as you can. Now obviously we've got the ZX6 through there, it is a road bike that we're turning into a track bike. What are the key differences in suspension when you want to go onto the track? I suppose it becomes less about absorbing the bumps, more about, as you say, keeping the back tyre in contact with the ground. That's right, and that's for, uh, again, for control, uh, but optimising traction ultimately. You know, when you go to the circuit, you're obviously travelling faster, which means that you're putting more forces through the bike. Uh, yeah. So we need to support that and control those movements as well. We're trying to do this, isn't we? Just take an everyday road bike and turn it into a track weapon without spending too much money. So what are our options? That's right, you can look at the, uh, the internals of the suspension, so looking at the, the different springs, upgraded springs, uh, and also uh, the valving within the uh, suspension as well to uh, make that again more refined so you've got more adjustability from the stock suspension uh, to an aftermarket uh, internals, uh, which we can look at. Okay, cool, okay. Well, we've come to the right place today. We've come to case uh, performance. Now, these guys have been looking and looking after suspension since 1978. They've been doing it in the paddock with Olins since 1983. It's a family-run business, and it really is. It, what these guys don't know about suspension isn't to be known. Um, and they have very kindly agreed to kind of go through the bike and, as you say, prepare it for track, redo the internals, and make it look really, really sexy, which is very nice of them. But um, there's some, they've got a bit of a weird accent. They talk like you do, and I don't, I don't understand that. Accent? Yeah, it's something strange. I don't know, but we'd probably go check that they're not messing it all up. Is that right? Well, yeah. I'll probably come with you and interpret. Okay, cool. Brilliant. I'm Nick White, one of the uh, directors and uh, one of the chief suspension technicians here at uh, K Suspension Services. Been in business since 1978. Started off in the off-road industry, which is a real good grounding for suspension. You can make an off-road bike, you can pretty much make uh, anything handle. 1983, we started with Orleans, and we're still with the brand today, and it's, uh, it's one of our best brands and something we're very proud to be associated with. Today, we're looking to, to work with the standard suspension units on the, on, on the bike. Obviously, um, not everybody can afford the, the, the all expensive suspension package. I mean, we do, we'd gladly sell anybody that suspension package, but not everybody who walks by our door can justify that. First, first and foremost, we, we strip the units. We start with a shock absorber. We strip the unit, basically take the shaft assembly out, make sure everything's clean, make sure everything's okay. Also, on a standard unit, which is vitally important, is to make sure everything's working. Otherwise, there's no point spending the money on that shock absorber. What we've done is tailored the setting to, to more of a track setting by beefing up the, the shimming given a, a, a larger base shim so that this, this basically improves damping force throughout the range. And then it's a case of putting the units back together again, making sure everything's clean and tidy. You'll see that we've, we've vacuum filled the shock absorber uh, to make sure there's no air in the aisle. Again, this is vitally important. We moved on to the forks where, again, with the aisle I'd seen better days. I'd like to give you credit for that, but you've told me you've not ridden it. That your bike actually had two leaking fork seals. Again, vital, vital to make sure everything's everything's working as it should be. Number one, it doesn't handle as it should do if it is leaking. Number two, you've obviously got the safety issue of, of hydraulic fluid going on your disc. We then rebuilt the rebuilt the units. We modified the damping force inside the cartridge. It was a generic 20 mil um, cartridge, so a compression and rebound piston. 
we changed the uh, configuration of the shim and again suited it to track. And then as we rebuilt, we installed stronger 9.5 linear springs and then reeled it accordingly to the correct level and then built it back together. And then we came in, put it back in the bike, sat you on it, realised how heavy you were and that we're going to have to modify it, but uh, no. And then set it up. We'll see how many pies you've been eating. Not at all, mate, not at all. Obviously, obviously. Okay. And I would suggest that is a really good starting point, to be honest. It's the best possible starting point. And then what we're looking for, we're looking for the bike basically to react evenly as we push down front and rear. Yeah. We want everything to react and come back as best as possible. The bike's nice and balanced and uh, I'm happy for it to go out now. See, I told you it was Manchester, look. It's chucking it down. Anyway, the bike's loaded up. We're ready to head back to London. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone here at Case Performance who worked on our bike today. It's been an incredibly eye-opening day, and I'm blown away by the fact you don't have to go and spend three grand on a fully tricked-out Olin suspension setup to get massive difference from your bike. This cost us today £650 parts and labour to get all our re suspension reconditioned and to get the guys to set the bike up properly. I can't wait to go and test it on track now, and if you want to find out more about these guys, it's simple. Go to k's-olins.co.uk. The bike you ride works best at right temperature. So too does your body. Exclo Heated Clothing, powered by Fabbrook Technology, is designed to keep your body warm on the inside so you ride at your best when it's cold outside. Fabbrook, the heat inside. Day two, I was feeling bright and breezy, but somebody got out the wrong side of the bed. Yeah, overnight, I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if I got overconfident, but something unclicked in my brain technique-wise. And when Simon took us out for our first trail run a day, mixing loads of declines, inclines, and everything we kind of learned on day one, I don't know if I was getting overconfident, but my technique went to pot. And, well, Stroppy Wilkins came out. Stroppy was an understatement. Is that that first drop? I'm trying to like persuade myself we have to, so my brain doesn't freak out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just go with it, all right? <laughs> Where is everyone? Oh, you're there! Duh. <laughs> I'm a dildo. But to be fair to Luke, before he lost his call, we did actually do some hill recoveries, and he was quite good at that. So, but with the two fingers or the one finger, you can just, again, just gently, gently, gently find that biting point until it's just creeping. And if you want to stop, let the clutch go. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Turn the steering all the way right. All the way left and right and left. Okay? And again with very little energy. Before you know it, you're facing back down the hill. It is heavy! Not when it's balanced. What do you reckon? Yeah. Looks good, eh? Perfect. The bit I struggle with is when you get to the edge and you have to let go of everything and just trust the bike. Scariest thing ever.
Simon and the team really instill lots of confidence within you and it's a women friendly course. At no point did I feel intimidated. <laughs> you're looking in control to me, Susie. You're here and you're up by. Trust me, mate, I would never control. have even gone down that hill before this morning. <laughs> Walking, let alone riding one of these things. I would, I would walk down there, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you need bikes for. If you ever do a course and Luke's in your group, I'd advise you to change groups because he's a little bit like an excited puppy and after a few hours spent with him, it gets a little bit tedious. Got my back out, giving it a bit of that. Managed to control it and stay on? Wasn't scared at all, totally intentional, honest. Left to ground, yeah. Then it came to inclines, and Susie, this is where it started getting a little bit wrong for me, didn't it? I think as you were getting tired, you were getting a little bit of target fixation, weren't you? Yeah, everything you look at in off-road riding, you generally tend to hit, and I was starting to notice the big pointy boulders as we were going up hills rather quickly, and my brain, for the first time in the couple of days that we've been doing it, suddenly realised that I could crash and it could all go wrong and I could get rather hurt. It was so funny because he was blaming his goggles. <laughs> they were steaming up, <laughs> it was all the goggles' fault. For me, the best thing about the course was learning from this guy. My name's Simon Pavey. Uh, my kind of background has been rally racing, really. So I've been to Dakar nine times, seven finishes, which is kind of the thing I'm most proud of, I guess. Uh, and um, yeah, but I've also had a long history of involved in teaching off-road as well since before we started the off-road school. I, I had some other programs before but out of Dakar in the second time I did Dakar 1999 we, we came up with this concept that we run with now for the off-road school. So yeah we, we started the off-road school as I say with the concept that you've seen in the last two days and the concept is very much about taking people that have uh, got no off-road experience and putting a load of building blocks in and step by step building confidence and showing people that you know they can do it really. Uh, and that, you know, that's level one and the whole foundation's all around that. It's all focused on core skills. They're all, stu they're all skills that are transferable back into your road riding and build confidence in your general motorcycling, I think. And, you know, the goal is that it's a bit of fun as well. And, and so out of that, over time, we've now got a whole program with a level two and a level three and some adventure rides and some tours. We do a tour in Portugal and we do some workshop classes and so on and so forth. You know, it was a little bit by accident, I suppose, in the first place that we, we went to BMW, but it, it, it came from, we were starting to do some stuff with magazines when we first set the off-road school up. And, you know, the, that message out there that, road, you know, for road riders that off-roading can help your road riding. So with the adventure bikes, you know, they're a little bit closer to what people know and what, what they understand. You know, we have a program with enduro bikes as well, but. The adventure bikes is, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's what people are into. And, and as we all know, we've seen in the last 10 years, you know, adventure bikes have grown and of course we've, we've had the, the whole program with Charlie and so on and so forth. And, and yeah, just, it works for the customer and it works for us. You know, it's, it's that halfway house between becoming a hard off-roader and actually just taking a few skills and bolting them onto your road bike. So yeah, the adventure bike thing's perfect. One of the key techniques of doing incline series is all about using the bike's momentum, isn't it? Yeah, if you're out on a long trail or enduro ride, there'll be some hills where you don't know what's at the top. Yeah, man. So Simon got us doing this little activity where we would come up a hill using the bike's momentum so that when we got to the top, we'd immediately turn around. Now, this is where I really started to struggle. Obviously, because of my goggles. He was getting really tired because it was important when you got to the top that you didn't use the brake because you were cornering straight away. So it looked very easy when Simon was doing it. Well, everyone got it. trying it. Well, we did Everyone got it and I didn't. I kept going up the top of the hill and just keep going straight. Now, we were really lucky with the weather in Wales. In fact, it was quite dusty and Simon said this is quite unusual because usually it's raining. So he thought it was time that we got a bit muddy. Yeah, now surely riding through mud on paper is really simple, especially when your instructor, Simon Pavey, says to avoid the left-hand side of this very deep puddle. But what did I go and do, Suze? You went on the left. Yeah. So 
So I was actually watching your mental breakdown and I saw you crash, which was the lamest crash ever, by the way. I did just come to a stop, put my foot out in the mud and then just fall over to one side, yeah. When Luke fell off in the swampy bit, I got really excited. I wanted to go in there, get that GS1200 out, because I love a bit of mud. Straight in there. Right, I'll let you two carry on then. Go, right, ready? <laughs> Luke, can't believe you couldn't pick that up on your own. Oh, sorry. Pretty sunk. <laughs> I hate to say this, but Susie, you're my hero. <laughs> Fair play. Oh, yeah. Now, at this point, I was in full-on Wilkins meltdown, so I went away to give myself a bit of a pep talk and then to watch Susie do something I can describe as completely insane. Yeah, I took full advantage of Simon's lunch hour, unfortunately, but I wanted to go back to those dawn-to-dusk parts that really beat me last year. Uh, Snick it into gear and go, go up there. We're going to have a go at this hill. And are we going to have a go at the, the Absolutely, downhill? Absolutely, yeah. We'll go so and have a look at that This next. downhill, actually, it doesn't look incredibly steep, but at the bottom, there's a steep drop off, isn't there? Indeed. And that's where my back wheel steep. was coming off. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going yeah, to cartwheel honest, down. That last bit is really steep. It's one of those bits where you look over the edge and go, OK, got to just let car the brakes out. Yeah. Go. I really wanted to master getting in and out of that quarry. That was like my goal. It looked like the hardest thing ever. I mean, I thought we'd been doing quite steep hills, inclines and declines, but the actual section from the dawn to dusk that you wanted to improve on, that uphill bit, there was no path. It was just a really steep incline full of rocks and roots and everything. And you just went straight up there. But then it came to the downhill bit into the quarry. Yeah, that became rather interesting, shall we say. Did I go too fast over the top, do you think? Maybe. As I was coming down the hill, all I could see was the arse end of the GS1200 coming at me quickly. Now, at this point, I actually thought she'd done herself a serious injury, but then all you could hear throughout the quarry was her laughing and just going, I'm sorry about the bike. Sorry. Now, the biggest thing Simon drilled into us was to go as slowly as you could at the start of an incline. What? I like going fast. After making a bit of a mess of the quarry... And the bike. And the bike. <laughs> Simon took us back to join the group, and he found this really steep, long hill for us to go up and down. You were back with us at that point, where you were back on form, but then he said you've got to go back up it. He literally turned around and said, right, lad, you're going to go back up that hill, and I waited till everyone else had gone, and then turned around to him and was like, no, not going to happen. There was a sheer, literally, kind of edge to it, wasn't it, at the top, last five metres, and I was like, there's no way I'm getting over it. But Simon said, Luke, trust me, give it the full beans in second gear and you'll make it over that crest. Simon told me, if at any point you think you're going to crash, well, you're going to crash. Now, I was at the top actually waiting for him, and I didn't see it, but all I heard was this almighty crash where he'd obviously hit a tree. The feeling of getting over the top of that incline was incredible. The feeling of hitting the tree, not so good. Our team was great. There was loads of bondage going on. I mean bonding. <laughs> <laughs> after two days of crashing, probably being the most tired I've ever been, throwing tantrums and everything else, thanks to Simon and his team and, well, my personal guardian angel here, I believe well loved it. I just want to do it again. Yeah, the good thing is, even if you are an off-road rider, like me, I learnt so much and they instil so much confidence into you, don't they, Simon and the guys? Well, you conquered those bits that from the dawn to dusk which you never thought you'd do, so I think we both took a lot away from the experience. And if they can teach me, Trust me, they can teach anyone. So Susie, have you seen what's been going on on our Facebook and Twitter? It's literally going crazy. We love hearing about what you want to see, what you like in the show. And what you don't like. I mean, that's the whole point of it. We are making the show for you guys. So get in touch and let us know what you want us to focus on. And what about our YouTube channel, which we're constantly uploading new footage to? And the great thing about it is it's not just footage from the show. Obviously, we can't fit everything into half an hour. So you get all the extra bits and behind-the-scenes footage as well. Yeah.